Ever wondered what happened to Segway? Today we delve into the enigma that is Segway. From its grand entrance to its sudden disappearance, we uncover the truth behind the Segway failure. Is Segway still around? Is Segway for cops? Let's find out. The Segway is a technical marvel that has undergone a surprising transformation in public perception over the years. While today the Segway might be considered a mere novelty or a passing thought in your mind, often associated with guided city tours or the sight of police officers and security personnel gliding effortlessly on one it's essential to recognize that the Segway's journey was once laden with immense anticipation and excitement. Knowing what we know now, we might be wondering, why was the Segway so highly anticipated to begin with? At the heart of this anticipation and hype lies Dean Kamen, an eccentric genius and millionaire known for his distinctive denim attire, fondness for helicopter travel, and even ownership of an island. Back in the 1970s, while still a college student, Kamen invented a revolutionary small infusion pump that revolutionized drug administration for patients. This invention gave birth to the company Auto Syringe, which he eventually sold for millions. Fueled by this success, he established a research and development firm that would go on to create impactful medical devices such as a portable dialysis machine and a flexible heart stent. Cayman's journey took a turn in 1990 when he witnessed a person struggling with a wheelchair to surmount a curb. This incident sparked his imagination, leading to the creation of the advanced robotic wheelchair known as the iBot. Boasting six wheels, a motor, and the capability to navigate curbs and stairs, the iBot even had the ability to stand, allowing users to match eye levels with others. During its development, Kamen and his team realized that the technologies they were refining could be used to birth an entirely new mode of transportation, and thus the Segway was born. Kamen's passion for the Segway was infectious. He believed it would redefine pedestrian travel. His dedication was unwavering as he invested his time, energy, and wealth into a transportation revolution. He painted a picture of Segways reshaping cityscapes worldwide, comparing their impact to calculators replacing notepads and cars outpacing horse-drawn carriages. Yet despite its potential, the Segway ultimately stumbled hard. But what went wrong? Let's dissect the reasons. Reason 1. Unrealistic hype. The Segway's downfall can be attributed, in part, to sky-high expectations. Dean Kamen's own aura and endorsements from tech titans like Jeff Bezos and Steve Jobs inflated these hopes. The media frenzy surrounding its launch only heightened the anticipation as speculations ran wild about its possible capabilities, ranging from teleportation devices to science fiction marvels. With such monumental expectations, the actual product introduction had a steep hill to climb. When the Segway was finally unveiled on Good Morning America in December 2001, the reality fell short of the towering expectations. The invention was indeed impressive, a culmination of years of technological innovation, but it was no match for the hype and anticipation it had garnered. It was this yawning gap between expectations and reality that contributed to Segway's initial struggle for acceptance. Reason number two, marketing strategy. Another crucial aspect that influenced Segway's trajectory was its marketing approach. Did you know Dean Kamen believed in Segway's potential so much, he changed his usual marketing approach for the product. Kamen's company used to meticulously research and develop these transformative technologies while entrusting another entity with the task of manufacturing and sales. However, the Segway marked a departure from this pattern. Kamen established a dedicated company for the Segway's creation creation, production, and sales underscoring his belief. Yet, an unconventional approach was adopted for sales. Rather than enlisting an external sales team, Segway opted for a different path. Steve Jobs, a visionary recognized for his marketing acumen, had a piece of advice. Simplicity. Jobs' counsel was to unveil the Segway with a single model, streamlining the customer experience. However, the Segway took a completely different route by launching with two distinct models. This choice diluted the product's market appeal. After its grand reveal on Good Morning America, the Segway followed a cautious, measured approach to market penetration. Initially accessible to large corporations such as police departments, the post office, and even Disneyland, the Segway's availability to the general public was delayed for nearly a year. Unfortunately, this delay saw the dissipation of initial hype, dampening Segway's potential. Reason number three, impracticality. Another significant hindrance emerged from the Segway's practicality
legality, or lack thereof. In many jurisdictions, riding a Segway on the sidewalk was prohibited, causing an obstacle for the Segway's usability. Beyond the legal constraints, the Segway itself posed practical difficulties. It was notably heavy, limited to a 12-mile travel distance on a single charge, and required both hands for operation. This dark impracticality hindered the Segway from integrating seamlessly into the lives of potential users. Reason number four, the price point dilemma. Price, a defining factor in any product's success, proved to be a big issue for Segway. Think for yourself, would you rather buy a $5,000 Segway when you have significantly cheaper alternatives like bicycles? This pricing misalignment wasn't lost on the company's leadership. The former vice president of marketing candidly admitted the steep price was a significant concern, while the former CEO acknowledged that a consensus prevailed that their products were overpriced. This unyielding price point was driven by several factors, including the engineering of the battery and the choice to manufacture the Segway in New Hampshire rather than opting for more cost-effective overseas manufacturing. The combination of these factors rendered Segway's production expensive, creating challenges in finding a balance between affordability and profitability. It's worth noting that prior to its launch, the Segway carried an impressive valuation of $650 million. Yet in a puzzling twist, Dean Kamen was only willing to part with a mere 15% of the company during the fundraising efforts. This financial complexity added another layer of intricacy to Segway's story. Reason number five, accidents and public image. Among the myriad of reasons behind Segway's underwhelming adoption lies a significant factor, accidents. While mastering any form of transportation requires practice, Segway's unique technology posed a learning curve for users. Balancing and maneuvering required precise learning, making it unfamiliar and occasionally tricky for novices. Unfortunately, a series of high-profile accidents cast a shadow on Segway's reputation. In 2003, only months after its public release, President George W. Bush famously tumbled off a Segway. Imagine the President of the United States falls off your product just months after you've launched it. That's a PR nightmare for any company. Similarly, in 2010, Ellen DeGeneres and a cameraman fell victim to Segway mishaps, amplifying its negative image. These incidents garnered attention and cemented an unfortunate connection between Segways and accidents, contributing to their struggle for acceptance. As the years passed, the Segway's journey took unexpected turns. By 2009, Dean Kamen sought to relinquish the company. In a twist of fate, General Motors, a potential suitor, faced financial turbulence, derailing any acquisition plans. Subsequently, a British millionaire, James Hazelden acquired the company. His involvement added intrigue and speculation, particularly given his background in protective barriers for military use. Tragically, Hazelden's connection to the Segway would take a shocking turn. Riding a Segway on his own property in the UK, Hazelden lost control, leading to a fatal accident. This unfortunate event not only claimed a life, but was the proverbial nail in the coffin for Segway as well. Reason number six, from innovation to joke. Another significant reason behind the Segway's decline is its transformation into a punchline, rather than a groundbreaking invention. Despite Dean Kamen's insistence that it not be labeled as a scooter, popular media portrayed Segways in a comical light. Iconic examples include Paul Blart, Mall Cop, and the quirky antics of Gobe Bluth on Arrested Development. These portrayals contributed to a skewed perception of Segway users as privileged and lazy. Even musical parodies such as Weird Al white and nerdy featured segways, further solidifying their association with whimsy and nerd culture. Segway, once envisioned as a revolutionary mode of transportation, had become a symbol of amusement, eroding its potential as a serious means of transportation. As the years rolled on, Segway's trajectory took an irreversible turn. Ownership of the Segway shifted hands multiple times, with its patents becoming a focal point for competing companies seeking market entry. In 2020, the final chapter was written. As production of the iconic Segway device ceased. This decision was driven by the shifting landscape of transportation technology and evolving consumer preferences. Speaking of revolutionary products, let's talk about a product that actually lived up to its hype, ChatGPT. Click the video on screen now to learn about this innovative AI and the genius behind it, Sam Altman.